So now we're going to talk about how compression reduces edema. So we talked about how edema happens. So how compression reduces edema, remember hydrostatic pressure and osmotic pressure out, are out of whack when you have edema. So um, you, we're going to use compression to increase the extravascular hydrostatic pressure. So we're adding a little oomph to that hydrostatic pressure. Um, we're going to promote circulation with the compression and we want to move the fluid proximally through the vessels. So we want to return it to the venous system. So using a, an elastic compression wrap, you want to do a figure eight wrap to um, encourage that distal to proximal movement of fluid. So we're going to start distally and we're going to do a figure eight wrap. We're going to practice this in the lab. A lot of times um, I'll see people come in and they have a compression wrap wrapped circumferentially around their knee or something. And a lot of times that can actually trap the fluid in the lower extremity. Um, so what we want to do is we want to start at the foot and work up and that um, figure eight pattern actually creates that herringbone effect that gives you that distal to proximal movement of fluid and it can be a lot more effective for controlling edema than just a circumferential wrap. So short stress, stretch bandages develop high working pressure so you have a bandage that doesn't have very much stretch. Long stretch bandages develop high resting pressure. So if you want, um, you're going to change your bandage um, choices by what effects you want, whether you want high working pressure or high resting pressure. Um, so we're going to talk about the different bandages in lab and try them out. So there are pressure garments. Um, the on the um, left hand side there, those are your standard compression stockings. Um, you'll see those frequently used after surgery. Um, there's a video in the module about how to apply those. Sometimes it's not easy. And a lot of times we're going to teach our patients or their caregivers how to do it. There are also um, compression garments that are often used after um, cancer or lymphatic surgery um, that are for a single body part. So that um, the one on the right shows an arm and hand um, compression garment. Um, a lot of the um, compression garments that you'll see for lymphedema are custom, so they're made custom for each individual person. So um, we want to prevent deep vein thrombosis when someone is, has to be immobile. Um, when, you, when you're immobile for some time, like when you're in the hospital, your um, deep, the risk of DVT increases with reduced local circulation. So compression can increase local circulation and reduce the formation of deep vein thrombosis. Um, the effect is greatest when used in combination with other forms of DVT prophylaxis, meaning anticoagulant medications. Sometimes it's just an aspirin, um, but the doctor gets to decide that. And exercise is a good a, another form of DVT prophylaxis. So the picture here it shows um, the serial compression device that's often used in hospital beds. Um, a lot of times we'll call them SCD for serial compression device. Um, and before you get the patient up to walk and do exercise, you have to unplug that from the machine. So um, if you're in an acute care setting, you'll see those a lot. So venous insufficiency is when the venous valves are unhealthy and they are allowing backflow um, in the veins. So normally, um, on the left hand side in a healthy vessel, the valves open with forward flow of the blood from the muscle contraction and then they close when the muscles are relaxed and so there's no backflow. If you have insufficient valves, so the valves are unhealthy, um, you get forward flow but the valves are unable to close and so you get backflow and that's where you get, that's the venous insufficiency. With venous insufficiency, you can get venous stasis ulcers. Um, compression can improve venous circulation by adding to that external hydrostatic pressure. They can improve the rate of healing of those venous stasis ulcers. And um, usually multi-layered compression is more effective than a single layer. Um, compression therapy is the cornerstone of venous ulcer treatment. So we will practice that multi-layered compression wrapping in the lab. 
So um, there's a device, and it's usually applied in a home health setting that's an intermittent pneumatic compression device. So in these two pictures, you see the one woman has it on her legs, and she's reading, having a nice day, and the other lady has it on her arm, and she's talking on her fish-shaped phone, I think. So um, it's usually applied in a home health setting, but um, that is uh, used often for lymphedema treatment. So after amputation, the residual limb needs to be shaped in order to prepare for functional weight bearing on a prosthetic device. So a lot of times you can use static or intermittent compression. Um, and intermittent compression is usually faster and more effective. But people, um, there are compression socks that are specific for an amputated limb that um, you will usually, a lot of times you'll be helping people um, apply those and maybe sometimes even deciding which ones are going to um, work best for them. So hypertrophic scarring is a common complication of deep burns. The scar tissue is not pliable and it has a raised appearance. Um, you really want to have compression of 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury for 23 hours a day to reduce the, the height of those scars. Um, the compression acts as a mold for the growth of the new tissue, so it actually helps lay down the tissue in a smoother, um, more pliable way. So contraindications for intermittent or sequential compression, heart failure or pulmonary edema. Those are those systemic issues we were talking about. Um, recent or acute DVT, thrombophlebitis or pulmonary embolism. Um, clots are definitely contraindications. If you have an obstructed um, lymphatic or venous return, um, sequential compression is not going to help you. Um, severe um, peripheral artery disease, because um, again, the return is not going to be healthy. Um, acute local skin infection, because the compression can aggravate it. Um, significant hypoproteinemia, that means excessive protein in the blood. That's going to change our osmotic pressure, and so you're not going to get the same results from sequential compression prompts. Um, acute trauma or fracture, and um, arterial revascularization. So in certain stages of healing, um, intermittent or sequential compression pumps are not recommended. Precautions, if somebody has impaired sensation or mentation, of course that's going to be difficult. Um, uncontrolled hypertension because we're changing fluid balance and that's going to affect their blood pressure. Cancer, always a precaution for just about everything. Stroke or significant cerebrovascular insufficiency, we definitely don't want to change the um, fluid balance in that case. And um, a superficial peripheral nerve, so if you have superficial peripheral neuropathy, that's going to cause impaired sensation and so that's a precaution for it as well. Potential adverse effects of compression, it might aggravate the condition that's causing the edema, like with those systemic conditions. Um, it can impair circulation if you have excessive pressure. So it, it's sort of an art um, how much pressure you're going to put on to affect the edema without impairing circulation. So this is a, a three-picture sequential um, picture of uh, multi-layer compression bandage systems and we will do this in lab. Um, it's and I've done this in the clinic and it's really effective. It really works a lot. It's usually used in cases um, of lymphedema or um, excessive edema caused by um, things that aren't contraindications but it's really it can be really effective. So the Unaboot it's a um, it's a specific kind of, um, it's almost a cast that is um, for high working pressure. You want a lot of pressure when the muscle's contracting. Compression garments are usually custom fit for each individual person for the, their part that's affected. Um, some of them have Velcro, Velcro closures so they're easier to put on, um, which is kind of nice actually. A lot of times when we're doing um, compression wrapping in the clinic, we are trying to get someone's um, edema down enough so they can be fitted for a compression device. 